Hey guys, my big comic book discovery this year so far has been these comics by this guy, Simon Hanselman. There's a picture in the back. There's, a picture. Uh, there's another picture in the back of this one, maybe. Anyways, the point is, they're comics, they're in color. Fanagraphics publishes them, I believe, all of them. And they're, uh, I was not aware they were a series when I read the first one. I read um, Bad Gateway. That is his most recent, and I think that's probably my favorite. It's really, really well done. I enjoyed them all, though, all four of them. But hold on before you run out and <laughs> run out, like run out to buy things. Before you uh, click and order these online, because I have some, some maybe some warnings. <laughs> um, these are uh, very funny books, very funny. I, I mean, I laughed very hard, all four of the books. But there's also some incredibly bleak stuff in it, some incredibly dark stuff in it. So if, if you can't handle that, <laughs> if you can't handle the truth, as uh, who Tom Cruise said in A Few Good Men, then maybe these aren't the books for you. I, though, I guess I can deal with it because <laughs> I, 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 I usually avoid this kind of, um, I don't really like, you know, bleak music, bleak fiction. But the fact that there's just so much hilarious, really funny stuff in these books are really what balances out. But I think that also just shows the range of the things he's showing. So let me tell you about the characters. There's a main cast of characters that sometimes the focus will move onto one or the other, kind of like old Archie comics or Disney comics where you have a group of characters that interact, but sometimes the stories are about one or the other. It's very Faulknerian too, I guess. But the two, I guess, main characters, Meg and Mog, this green witch and this cat, her boyfriend, are <laughs> you know, saying it out loud, it's just you see how ridiculous it is, but um, it's so funny. <laughs> um, but anyways, those are the two main characters. But then the, there's these, these kind of extreme characters. At one extreme, there's this character, Al. And when I see Al's face, he's just <laughs> this kind of, he's a kind of yuppie roommate who's trying to kind of succeed in a more uh, standardized way, <laughs> whereas they've just kind of dropped out of life and they're just drinking and doing all the drugs they can on their couch every day. And then there's this other character who's even more extreme than them, Werewolf Jones, <laughs> and his his two kids, uh, I can't remember their name, Jackson and something else. He's... <laughs> okay, I'm just thinking about it now and it's making me laugh. I finished today, one more year, the third book, and I read them out of order, unfortunately, but it doesn't really matter. The stories are fairly self-contained, although there is a larger continuity. And, and there will be notes at the beginning saying that where this falls in the continuity and that he's clearly mapped out future books and knows where he's going with this. I'm not sure if these are... I mean, I get the impression that there is a lot of like autobiographical elements in this. <laughs> and if you, if you haven't <laughs> been around characters like this... Um, they exist, definitely. I've, I've known people like this who live like this, and I've never lived quite at this level, but it's, um, there are people out there like this, certainly. I feel like I'm get getting a glimpse into an alternate uh, universe. Not an alternate universe, like just how a lot of people live nowadays that are just, you know, the, the, the kind of vacant sense of, of possibility in their lives. I, I totally see that with these characters. It's amazing. But it's not simple though what he shows because he'll every now and then he'll he'll creep in these these really wonderful scenes, wonderful moments and realizations that are just so deep and like out of left field that and when they hit you or he'll change art techniques. You know, characters are <laughs> constantly um I wouldn't like if you have kids, I would not let your kids read these because you know, I'm not a prude by any means, but, you know, like, let them watch something, like, more, <laughs> more saccharine, like, you know, South Park, for instance, which, if if you think, you know, so South Park is bad, then maybe this is not, like, the book for you, <laughs> because, um, yeah, this is, makes, makes that kind of stuff look pretty sweet and safe. So, um, who would like this book? I think the closest thing I can compare it to nowadays, although there's different elements to it, but 
uh, Johnny Ryan's work, Angry Youth Comics, that level of just kind of, uh, you wonder about the person creating these stories, like if they're able to even function as a human being. But I know that's, you know, Simon Hanselman is probably, I've seen interviews actually, it's a pretty interesting character to interview. He grew up in Tasmania and I think he lives now in Seattle, uh, where his publishers, uh, Fanographics is as well. Anyways, you, it's incredible to me that he um, is able to, he, I get the impression he's a very regular working person, like he loves to do these stories and loves to do these comics and that it's just part of his process and, you know, he interacts with other assistants, but for the most part it's, I, I get the impression that Tim just, you know, uh, Dave Sim, I haven't read it all, but he wrote Cerberus, Cerberus, however you pronounce it, for 25 years. And I was like, what he did, that was his life, that's his commitment to the stories that he felt he had to tell. So I get the impression with Simon Hanselman, there's something equivalent. But I, I just love these stories. I I already want to reread them, which is a great sign. I, I heard that he was heavily influenced, well not heavily influenced, but some of his earliest influences were Karl Barks. And I think of Robert Crumb too, who also had Karl Barks as uh, an early influence. And the thing about Karl Barks is his stories, Disney stories, Donald Duck, Uncle Scrooge, are very, uh, you know, they're, they're G-rated for the most part. And that the idea that these these people like Robert Crumb and Simon Hanselman, whose, whose books venture into <laughs> be well beyond rated R and whatever is beyond that in that zone, there's just some very disturbing stuff in these books. The first one has a trigger warning, so keep that in mind. But if you think you can handle all that, like, <laughs> I think you'll love these books. They're, uh, the coloring, the painting, like, they just look so different and he, he knows how to use the panels. So he's not picking up maybe the story types, maybe the adventure story types of Karl Barks, but the way that Karl Barks moved the, through the panels, I, I see that a lot in uh, in these stories, which, <laughs> yeah, and also the way that he'll split the narrative and to follow different characters and then build towards a climax. It's very wonderful. I just wanted to point these out to you. I think if you're, if you know other Fanographics books, you kind of have some idea of what to expect, although they're all very unique. I wish I had the other two. I can show pictures though. Start with Mega Hex, that's the first one. There's another one that recently just came out this year. It's not one book, I guess it's a collection called Seeds and Stems in a lot of different formats that were originally published as zines or whatever, really um, hard to find online, but now they're available. I have not got that one yet. I do want to get it and see if it, I'm sure I'll enjoy it because I enjoyed all four of them. But Bad Gateway, if you want to just see him at his is most incredible maybe that's the place to start or start with mega hex but the actual i guess publication order is mega hex you know I, read them in any order mega hex uh mega mug in amsterdam one more year bad gateway and then most recently stems and seeds was published so i'm looking forward to next next books that he has because uh, he says i think meg's coven is one of the titles i'm looking forward to it there's very few authors, comic authors, that I'm looking to, forward to as much as this guy's next book. So I hope you check them out. I think you'll enjoy them maybe if you're kind of a zany, you like zany fiction that is fantastical, but containing elements that you know are real. And that's, that's what makes them so remarkable. So I, check them out, Simon Hanselman. You will be maybe delighted, maybe disgusted, maybe horrified maybe flabbergasted, but you will find something very unique. Toodaloo. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to mention that I only read these comics when I'm really high, and that may be a good piece of advice for you.